Hello, fellow Honors Physics classmates. My name is Alex Calabro. I'm David Wessner. And I'm Brian Carter. And you're watching this week's edition of Inside Physics 101. Brought to you by Rose Holman Institute for Technology. The future home of Eric Beadle. That's right. On this week's edition of Inside Physics 101, we're learning all about black holes. What is a black hole? Where is a black hole? How big is a black hole? How big? How black are they? Are they all black or I don't know. We don't know, but we're going to find out. We are going to find out right here. So right now on Inside Physics 101, we're starting off with the history of how we discovered black holes. Brian, I got away. you. Go for it. Two centuries ago, the English geologist John Mitchell realized that it would be theoretically possible for gravity to be so overwhelmingly strong that nothing could escape. To generate such gravity, an object would have to be very massive and unimaginably dense. At the time, the necessary conditions for dark stars, as Mitchell called them, seemed physically impossible. In 1916, the concept was revived when German astrophysicist Karl Schwarzschild decided to compute the gravitational fields of stars using Einstein's new field equation. Schwarzschild limited the complexity of the problem by assuming the star was perfectly spherical, gravitationally collapsed, and did not rotate. His calculations yielded a solution aptly called a Schwarzschild singularity. Scientists theorize that a singularity lies at the center of a black hole, a catchy term physicist John Wheeler coined in the 1960s. Since then, black holes have caught the public imagination. Thanks, Brian. That was really informative. But I still really don't understand, like, what is a black hole? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on this one. Well, let me try to explain. A black hole, basically, is it's a region of space-time from which gravity prevents anything, and I mean anything, including light, from escaping. Light can't escape it. It's kind of like uh, a possessive girlfriend. Mm, I totally agree. Uh, but let's get some more detailed information. I agree, I agree. So as discussed earlier, a black hole is an object that is so compact, in other words, has enough mass and a small enough volume, that its gravita gravitational force is strong enough to prevent light or anything else from escaping. Physicists and math uh, mathematicians have found that space and time near black holes have many unusual properties. Because of this, black holes have become a favorite topic for science fiction writers. However, however black holes are not fiction. They form whenever massive, but otherwise normal stars die. We cannot see black holes, but we can detect material falling into black holes and being attracted by black holes. In this way, astronomers have identified and measured the way of many black holes in the universe through careful observation of the sky. We now know that our universe is quite literally filled with billions of black holes. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. I get what a black hole is now. I still feel like there's a whole bunch of things that we really don't know about black holes, though. Yeah, there's definitely a lot that science hasn't told us so far. Maybe things we haven't discussed in this video. I mean, you know, how big is a black hole? Do we know how big? And, I mean, what happens if you actually fell into one, you know? I think we should look at a couple of these questions in more depth, don't you think? Yeah, I agree. Let, let's do it. I agree, too. So what happens if you fall into a black hole? Well, let me try to explain. The closer you get to the center of the black hole, gravity gets even stronger. If you were to be caught by the pull of a black hole, you would be sent into freefall toward its center. The pulling force would increase as you move towards the center, creating what's called a tidal force on your body. That is to say, the gravity acting on your head would be much stronger than the gravity acting on your toes. That would make your head accelerate faster than your toes. The difference would stretch your body until it snapped apart first at its weakest point, and then disintegrating rapidly from there as the tidal forces became stronger than the chemical bonds holding your body together. You'd be reduced to a bunch of disconnected atoms. Those atoms would be stretched into a line and continue in a processional march. As Neil deGrasse Tyson described it, you would be extruded through space like toothpaste being squeezed through a tube. And that's what would happen if you fell straight into a black hole. Wow, guys, that really does clear up a lot of things about black holes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we got to learn about the history of black holes and just right. some basic knowledge yeah. about what a black hole is. I feel like I really know about black holes. I mean, we even learned some fun facts. 
fun. fun. They were fact. They were fun. fun. They were fun. And they were factual. They were and they were science and stuff. Yeah. So hopefully you, the viewer, you know, have learned some things about black holes, right? I have. Good. I'm glad you've learned some stuff about black holes, Brian. Well, join us next week for Inside Physics 101, where we're talking about the general theory of relativity. Ooh. And I think we're even going to have a surprise appearance yeah, at, Rose, I, it, yeah, at Rose Holman. I have, it has been confirmed Eric Beadle will actually be giving personalized tours of the campus and even possibly his fully automated dorm room. Wow. That's right. That's right. See you guys later. See ya. All right, guys, I think, uh, I think that should be it. I think we got what we need for the video. We're right. good. Nice job, guys. Nice yeah, job. I think, I we're, I think we're ready to turn work. it in. Well, it's a... Oh. Shh! Quiet! No! You! You! Oh! Oh, dang! Dude! Oh, what? Yeah! Nice! Thank you.